Riley. Yeah. This is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top things you missed in The Last of Us Episode 7. Marlene is the lady that helped me get... It doesn't matter. For this list, we're looking at the best references, Easter eggs, and foreshadowing from the seventh installment in the post-apocalyptic series. If you aren't caught up to the show or haven't played The Last of Us games, beware of major spoilers ahead. What's the one video game you would save to play during the fungal apocalypse? Let us know in the comments below. How'd she get that scar? Wait, who gave you the black eye? Tell me where you were. During the course of the seventh episode, Ellie gets playfully attacked by her friend, receives a black eye, and gets a bite from an infected. While all of those incidents are fully explained, we're missing key details about one of her oldest marks. Ellie has a distinct eyebrow scar since the beginning of the show. However, we only get a very vague nod as to what caused it. Rocky start. Could have been worse, though. Could have been a 7-Eleven situation. No, thanks. I'd like to keep my other eyebrow in one piece. This roundabout answer is a reference to another franchise running joke. Gamers have been curious about what exactly happened to Ellie's eyebrow since 2013. Although creator Neil Druckmann has been asked about it, he only hinted that the story would be revealed at a later time. We can only hope Ellie won't pull a joker and will actually tell us the tale one day. Well, you look nervous. Is it the scars? You want to know how I got them? Hinting at a watery game detail. When Riley hints that she's been saving a present for her best friend, Ellie makes a few guesses as to what it could be. I do like gifts. Is it a spider? No. Is it in your shirt? No. Is it a water pistol? Better. Better! The water gun she mentions is a great reference to the source material. In The Last of Us Left Behind DLC, Riley surprises Ellie by bringing water guns to the mall. Those water guns you've been dreaming of? I nearly got shot for these. Surprise. Once they come out, gamers are treated to a fun section where they have to try and drench the Firefly who brought the toys. We think the show cut this story beat in place of the video game scene. While the arcade cabinets are busted in-game, they're fully functional in the series. And in our opinion, a book of puns made for a more ponderful gift anyway. Volume 2. Shut up! <laughs> they made a second one? Where did you get that? A big aha musical moment. Be, be, be careful. <laughs> Music is incredibly vital throughout the seventh installment of The Last of Us. Right before Ellie and Riley share their first kiss, they play the Etta James cover of I Got You Babe. This is the exact same song you'll hear in the game when the two have a romantic moment. <laughs> Outside of that lovely musical beat, we also hear Take On Me during Ellie's adorable escalator ride. And this music sucks. You little thief! The catchy tune was perfect for two major reasons. Firstly, you can see that Ellie is a fan of the group by freezing at the right moment and looking at the cassettes in her room. The presence of the song harkened back to the first episode of the show. Back then, Ellie discovered that Joel had a secret communication system where an 80s song symbolized that there was danger ahead. Gotcha. 80s means trouble. Code broken. Having 1984's Take On Me play in the background was the show's way of letting us know the mall wasn't as safe as it seemed. Become a Watch Mojo channel member and get exclusive perks like Mojo emojis, loyalty badges, priority comment replies, and exclusive members-only content, including live list rankings with the Mojo staff and peeks behind the scenes. Don't miss out! Ellie's fight with Bethany was a deep lore cut. I don't want to fight about it. Fight about it? You don't fight. Just your friend fights. She's not here anymore, is she? Ellie once again established that she wasn't afraid to stand up for herself by getting into a fight with Bethany. Although this scene isn't depicted in the game, we do see a similar scenario play out in another piece of The Last of Us media. Bethany started it. Well, Bethany's in the infirmary with 15 stitches. Good. In the first American Dreams prequel comic, Ellie arrives at a new military school. It doesn't take her long before she gets into a fight with some teens who try to grab her belongings. Just when things look grim, Riley rushes in and takes down the angry assailants. 
The show notably hints at the fact that she did the same for Ellie in the world of the show several times. It's just one of the many great deep cuts the series has given us. I'm just saying, you can't fight everything and everyone. You can pick and choose what's important. The infected actor has had a far more chilling role. Get ready to run. While he's not on screen for a long time, Ian Roislow had a huge impact on the plot by playing the infected man that bites both Riley and Ellie. This isn't the first time he's been cast as a creepy antagonist. However, we have to give a special shout-out to his role as King Herod on Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. In one episode, Roislow plays a slimy-looking villain who attacks Sabrina and Nick while they're having a relatively nice night out. Sabrina, run! You stole my crown! Disturbed my sleep! The actor clearly has a knack for playing gross-looking antagonists who ruin people's dates. If you see Roislow's name on a cast list, there's a good chance a romantic night will end on a sour note. What are we gonna do? Wait, I see you. We got two options. Adding explosive details. Did you make these? Yes, Ellie, put it down. To kill soldiers. The scene where Ellie called Riley out for harboring firefly bombs was as tense as it was heartbreaking. While the new freedom fighter had good intentions, her best friend pointed out that innocent people were likely to get hurt whenever these explosive tools were used. Their conversation was a great nod to two major scenes. In the comics, the duo gets caught in the crossfire of a conflict between Fireflies and local soldiers from Fedra. Riley then reveals that she has smoke bombs at the ready. While Ellie is reluctant, she ends up throwing one at soldiers. Outside of the comics, the bomb scene in Episode 7 provides another reference to the show's premiere. Riley insists that the bombs were not meant to hurt civilians. We would never use them on you or anywhere ever near you. I would never let them do that. However, we saw people get injured firsthand due to an explosive during the premiere. This scene served as proof that both the Fireflies and Fedra have innocent blood on their hands. Tell me I'm wrong. I think that you don't know everything. Dawn of the Wolf Part 2. So this is the first wonder, right? Up? Uh, yeah, sure. There can be five wonders in this mall. Although Riley said the mall had five wonders, there was a sixth hiding in the background. When they walk by the small movie theater, you can see a poster for Dawn of the Wolf Part 2. This poster notably inspired a funny and emotional moment in the first game. When Ellie sees the movie title, Joel lets her know that it's a teen flick that sounds a lot like Twilight. The funny reference gets sad when Ellie asks why he knew so much about it. Nobody gets gutted. It's a, it's a dumb teen movie. Who dragged you to see it, then? <sighs> I don't know. Let's just stay focused, all right? Dawn of the Wolf Part 2 is undoubtedly a tragic reminder of what Joel lost. However, we'd be lying if we said we didn't want to see it just to know if their wolf character is more or less interesting than Twilight's Jacob. Have you ever had a secret you couldn't tell anyone? One that wasn't yours to share? A Naughty Dog Easter Egg Gamers may have picked up on the fact that Left Behind is both the title of the episode and the name of the DLC story that fully introduced Riley. It's one of several fun nods to the show's gaming roots. After a Mortal Kombat poster appeared in the DLC, it became a main centerpiece in the episode. Oh, you ready? Yeah. Ellie's treasured Sony Walkman pays homage to the game company that was once the exclusive home of The Last of Us. But the sneakiest Easter egg came when the immune survivor was meeting with a Fedra captain. Can't see where this is going? Let me help you out. Two paths ahead of you. When he uses his keys as a metaphor, you can spot the Naughty Dog logo. Thanks to that company's work with Sony, we got the game that inspired a thrilling and layered series. Weather. It's two minutes. Or two days. We don't get that up. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.